Uh, today is July 30th, 2014, my friends, and uh, life finds me here in Vancouver again to do the participate in the big Dogwood Monarchist Society Pride kickoff show uh, tonight at 11:30 at the junction at 11:38 Howe Street here in Vancouver. So there we are. Uh, Today, I, friends, I beg your indulgence. I'd like to uh, talk about uh, a very something that I consider to be a very interesting topic. And um, so, without further ado, I'll begin. Um, for about three or four years now, it's been an interest of mine to try and figure out exactly what was happening in Germany in the 1930s and 40s. Because, you see, this was a country, an advanced country, possibly one of the most advanced countries in the world, certainly one of the most advanced countries in Europe, and that was saying something at the time. And for 20 years, it went insane. Okay? Now, I've been trying to figure out why it went insane for all that time. Um, why did such an advanced country, uh, the seat of reasoning and the font of so many wonderful things, go crazy for a while? And I still haven't figured it out yet. Uh, I believe there were a number of forces at work and there wasn't any one single cause. In the meantime, I've learned a lot about uh, Nazi Germany and I thought I would share a few of those things with you today. So without further ado, we'll begin on that as well. Um, let's see. The Nazi party, the, na the uh, name we all have come to recognize Nazi, N-A-Z-I, is actually the anglicization, the English making, of the German name N-S-D-A-P, for Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterparty, the National German Workers' Party. And um, the Nazi party itself was grounded pretty firmly in left-of-center uh, ideology, trying to get a fair shake for the working man. Now, it didn't quite work out that way. It took a pretty hard right turn at some point down the road, but that's how it started. Um, let's see. The uh, SS, who I'm sure everyone has heard about, uh, started off not as any part of the military at all, but as the armed wing of the Nazi party. Um, originally, the Nazi party and a number of other parties in Germany at the time started off as street fighters. And uh, the uh, NSDAP was the political arm, if you will, of one of these uh, street fighter organizations, the Sturmabteilung or Stormtroopers. Now, it was decided uh, one, uh, pretty soon after Adolf Hitler joined the NSDAP that he needed a core of bodyguards of street fighters that he himself could trust. And uh, he set into motion um, a set of uh, circumstances which culminated in the creation of the SS, Der Schutzstaffel. Uh, named by Hermann Göring after the protection squadrons that accompanied bombers and sensitive planes during World War I. Her, uh, Hermann Göring was a World War I flying ace. He served with the famous Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron. So the SS was to be loyal specifically to Adolf Hitler. Um, and it was divided into three groups. Now, the SS started off as the armed wing of the Nazi party. They never were soldiers and they were never supposed to be part of the army. Um, the purpose that the uh, SS was to be put up to once the war was done was they were to be a, nation a nationwide police force, a paramilitary police force. Um, if you will, a police force organized along military lines. Now, uh, Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, who was actually the man in charge of the SS, decided that the SS needed some uh, credentials to carry out its policing duties and that's why it served as a combat unit during the Second World War uh, under the administration of the members of the army but not uh, part of the army itself. They were very careful about that. Um, and it's ironic too that the SS was never soldiers and considerable attempt was made not to make the SS soldiers and they exceeded in doing soldierly things uh, many of the uh, combatants in the Second World War. Um, the only German force that could compare with the, uh, uh, the SS, particularly the elite, union, elite units, uh, the 1st SS Panzer Division, Liebstandarte, the 2nd SS Panzer Division, uh, Das Reich, and the 3rd SS Panzer Division, Totenkopfverband, was an elite army unit, um, the uh, Großdeutschland, 
uh, infantry uh, organization. Um, all of the uh, portions of the SS were what would be termed heavy infantry. They had tanks, they had artillery pieces, motor transport, um, and similar items. Um, by contrast, a modern day light infantry um, arrangement like the US Army Rangers or Canada's uh, JTF-2, which are by the way elite units, uh, would be classed as light infantry because they don't have their own um, uh, organic uh, armor units. They don't have their own tanks or artillery or anything like that. So the SS was organized militarily by a, a chap named Felix Steiner. Um, the uh, SS Liebstandarte started off as Adolf Hitler's bodyguards um, and it is in some ways the oldest component of the SS. They were the SS men who were uh, to guard Adolf Hitler specifically uh, and they grew out of the Stoßtrupp which was Hitler's bodyguards. Um, the uh, third SS Panzer Division, Totenkopfverband, were the militarized concentration camp guards. And although I haven't been able to pin it down yet, uh, many of the war crimes and Nazi atrocities are in some way linked with the uh, uh, SS Totenkopfverband. I haven't figured out exactly why, how, or who yet, but that seems to be the indication I'm getting. Most properly, the uh, second SS Panzer Division, Das Reich, which began life as the SS Verfungustrupp, or mobile troops, troops of special dispensation, um, they more than anyone else uh, merit being called the Waffen SS, the armed SS. Um, but uh, as I said at the outset, the SS were not soldiers. Uh, they were they started off as the armed wing of the Nazi Party, and after the German Empire had been created, they were the SS was to be its uh, nationwide police unit. Okay, uh, with the added credentials that it had served as a combat force in the Second World War, and as it turned out, a very good combat force, a very effective combat force. Um, some of the other interesting aspects of uh, Nazi Germany were, in some ways, Nazi Germany was very friendly to workers because you couldn't be fired from your job uh, in Nazi Germany. You had to stay on your job until somebody told you you couldn't. Um, Nazi Germany had some of the most rigorous anti-smoking laws um, ever uh, conceived. In fact, the most uh, draconian modern anti-smoking laws pale by comparison with the ones that existed in Germany in the 1930s and 40s. Um, the Nazis didn't like um, uh, smoking. They also enacted some of the most uh, pro-animal uh, um, uh, guidelines ever uh, instituted. Uh, Hitler and Himmler themselves were animal lovers. Uh, I haven't been able to pin down to what extent yet, but the, uh, the animal protection laws that existed in Germany at the time were very, uh, had very strong backing from those two very powerful men. So there are a number of uh, sort of secret facts about Nazi Germany um, for you. Uh, the products of uh, several years of intensive study that I've made of uh, Nazi Germany and I hope that I've illuminated you uh, and you can probably count on more to come.